Hey guys, my name is Rob Noir, and today I have a video for you all about playing your original Atari 2600 games in HD. And this video is happening because of the Retron 77, the clone console recently released by Hyperkin. And so we're going to dive into what this thing is and what it can do in this video, kind of show you a comparison, give you my thoughts, opinions, and all that. And so I have covered other consoles in HD in the past. In fact, this is my favorite series of videos that I ever produced to work on. And I feel like it's a really good series because as TV technology advances, more and more we're ending up with TVs that will only accept HDMI inputs. They no longer have the RF, that's been gone for a while. They no longer have even composite. Some still have RGB, but even that's on its way out. I have three TVs in my place at this moment, and only one of them has any inputs other than HDMI. So in the future, if you want to play these old consoles on your HD TV, you're going to have to have an actual HDMI core that you can actually plug into both ends. So I've covered the Super Nintendo with the Analog Super NT, covered the N64 with the Ultra HDMI mod, and just recently I covered the GameCube with the Eon GCHD adapter, and now finally I'm stepping outside of the realm of Nintendo and covering something a little bit more obscure. So this might come as a surprise to you, or probably not considering my age, but I'm somebody who never had an Atari 2600 as a kid or growing up or anything like that. My first experience actually playing the Atari 2600 was about a year ago when one of my good friends Dave came over with his Atari and we played a bunch of it. We actually recorded a couple of videos, we put them up on the channel and it was a lot of fun. And before that I had never even experienced an Atari 2600 game on the original console. I mean I had played some like greatest hits compilations, I mean everybody's played Pong and Pac-Man in some form, but I'd never played it on the original console and it was a really interesting and unique experience. Now the Atari 2600 is definitely considered one of the originals when it comes to home console gaming. I mean there was the Coleco, there was the Intellivision, there was the Commodore 64, old PCs, and the Atari 2600. Nostalgia is at an all-time high for this console, especially with the name Atari being in the media a lot recently. And one of the problems when it comes to playing Atari 2600 games is that it's almost impossible to recapture that feel of playing these old games on the original console and a lot of that really boils down to the control scheme like playing with the joystick playing with a modern controller just really doesn't recapture that feel there was nothing really like playing with that joystick and that's why I totally get where all this nostalgia comes from and all that stuff that people like to say about how you know enthusiasm is very infectious well as it turns out that's actually very very true because after having played the Atari 2600 with my friend, I actually found myself thinking about it a lot, really curious about what the game library is like, and always keeping an eye out for Atari 2600 games and ways to actually play them on my TV or record them. Now the Atari 2600 is a very old console. At this point it's almost bordering on antique. It was released in 1977. I do believe that there were a few different like re-releases after 77, but that's when it first came out. So this thing is quite old. And because of that, unfortunately, you don't have a lot of options when it comes to video out. The original Atari 2600 actually only has RF out. And if you're not familiar with RF, that's this one cable here that will usually plug into an RF modulator box like the one I have here, which will then have another cable that comes out and that actually plugs into your TV and it lets you plug into like an antenna to the RF modulator box. It's really, really annoying and the signal quality is really, really horrible. Like RF is pretty much the worst signal quality that you will ever see out of a console. I mean, it's possible to get something that's worse, but RF is kind of like bottom of the barrel. Something you may not know, but a trick that I always use to play these old consoles that only do RF is I just hook up a coax cable which is the kind of cable that you would usually see on like an old-school antenna and I just put like an RF adapter on whichever end is applicable and then I can just use that instead of using an RF modulator because the modulators actually wear out and can even further degrade your signal quality but even using this more streamlined method the picture quality is terrible like I'll show you some footage here this does not look good at all and to actually be able to play this on an HDTV you're gonna have to hook it up to an upscaler 
color. And doing that is complicated. Like, the easiest way to do it is to actually run your RF cable through a coax cable into a VCR, and then your VCR is gonna allow you to have like component or composite out cables, and then you run those to an upscaler, then your upscaler is gonna give you an actual HDMI cable. It's complicated, and each level that you go through further degrades the signal quality. And unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of options when it comes to playing your Atari 2600. Like, your Atari 2600, it only has RF, and the cable is actually wired to the console itself. Now, like a lot of these retro consoles, there are some internal mods that you can get done. The RGB mod would arguably be the better one to do, especially if you pair it with, like, the Framemeister or the OSSC. But still, that's an internal mod, and it's actually a little bit hard to find out there. It's not easily accessible like the HD NES mod or even the Ultra HDMI mod. So it gets a bit complicated, and again, it's not a true HD mod. Now, another thing to mention is that while there are a bunch of clone systems that will let you play, like NES games or Super Nintendo games or even like Genesis games, the Atari 2600 has kind of really been overlooked. So when something like the Retron 77 comes out, it really kind of turns your head and you take notice of it. So the Retron 77 is made and produced by Hyperkin. They're the same people who made the Retron 5, which is probably their most popular product to date, at least in the retro gaming circles. And you might have heard of it before, that is a clone console that can play various other consoles. And that was kind of like their claim to fame for a while. Hyperkin does do other stuff, like they do controllers and some third-party accessories. But in terms of consoles, they're mainly known for the Retron 5. And it's worth noting, I have had a Retron 5 in the past, and I am not a fan. I actually got rid of it within like a month of having it. So this Retron 77 here, I'm really hoping that this will help redeem Hyperkin for me, at least when it comes to consoles, because their previous products just haven't really quite done it for me. So the Retron 77 lets you play your Atari 2600 games off of the original cartridges in HD. And it's worth noting that while it does say HD, this thing only does 720p. So the fact that it only does 720p, this probably isn't that big of a deal to you. It does still look very good, and pretty much all HDTVs will support 720p. Now, it won't look quite as good as 1080p, but a lot of retro gamers find that 720p is fine, especially since it's more accurate to the original resolutions, and scan lines tend to line up much better in 720p than 1080p. And the main focal point of these consoles in HD series that I do, it's usually the comparison between the old footage and the new, like, what the actual original console can do and what the new version, the mod, the adapter, whatever, is actually able to output and then kind of compare the two so you can see. And I am going to do that right now, but you're immediately going to notice what I'm talking about here. There really is no comparison, like comparing RF, the lowest quality signal possible, to like an actual HD out. There's really, there's just no comparison. So I'm going to throw up that footage now. I've only done a couple games because immediately you're going to see see what I'm talking about. So as you can see, in terms of the video image, the picture quality, I mean the Retron 77 is a million miles beyond what you can get with a standard Atari 2600. Now if you're able to actually mod one for RGB and you have a very high quality upscaler, the picture would probably be pretty comparable, but for the actual console versus this, obviously the Retron 77 is the clear winner. Now the reason why the video quality is not the focal point of this video that I'm doing right now, this is a Retron, which means it is actually an emulator. It's basically an emulator box, much like the Retron 5. 
And because it's an emulator, there are a lot of issues that can come along with that. So that's really what we need to look into in this video. And the reason why I don't like the Retron 5 is because it is an emulator box. And it's not that I have anything against emulation in general. Back when I was a kid, or at least a teenager, I used to play a lot of my games via emulators. The problem when it comes to emulators though, and especially the Retron, one of the biggest, and it's the one that I always feel, and it's like my biggest pet peeve whenever it comes to gaming, in any of these HD videos, I mean, you'll hear me talk about it, and it's input lag. Now, because it's an emulator, it's actually running a program to run the game. It's not actually running it off of the cartridge you plug in. It downloads the game off of the cartridge and then runs it on a program, which is basically the same as running it on your computer. And then it has to interface with this foreign controller and there's all these other steps. It introduces input lag, which is when you press a button and then it actually takes a moment before the action that corresponds to that button happens in the game. And I find the Retron 5 had ridiculously bad input lag and now it can depend on the console absolutely and it can depend even on the game but across the board every game that I would play on the Retron 5 the moment I would play it on original hardware I would feel it and I would do so much better on original hardware because it just responds the way it's supposed to and the Retron 5 just would not and that's one of the main reasons why I didn't like the Retron 5 and it's one of the things you have to keep an eye out and see how that compares on the 77. Now another big problem with the Retron 5 5 was compatibility. There were a lot of games that just don't work on the Retron 5 because they're not compatible with the emulators. I especially saw this with the Game Boy Advance. Any Game Boy Advance game that uses 3D just does not run very well on the Retron 5. And I gotta say, my first experience with the Retron 5 was being like, oh cool, it plays Game Boy Advance games, sticking one in and then just seeing this pixelated, colorful disaster. And there were several games that I tried with my Retron 5 that would not work. And so that's another thing that you really need to know about the 77 is compatibility. What percentage of the Atari 2600 library will it actually play? And in addition to compatibility, because this is emulation, there's also a lot of other glitches and problems that can crop up with the system. And we need to know, are there any with this? What do you have to look out for? However, the fact that it's an emulation box and a clone console doesn't come without any advantages. There's actually a few cool things that you can do with your Retron 77. On the back, there is a black and white switch which you can use to toggle on the modes that were on the original Atari. This thing has the same mode, although a lot of games don't seem to be compatible with it. In some games, when you turn it on, it basically makes the game so that you can't see anything. It's kind of useless, but it's cool that it has it there. There's, of course, the aspect ratio switch, which you're going to be using a lot, especially if you like the games to look the way that they're supposed to. And there's also a button on the back here called Fry. And what this does is basically emulate cartridge tipping. Cartridge tipping is a really weird thing that people used to do. I used to hear about it first on the N64. And what you do is you stick the game into the cartridge slot slightly tilted so that not all of the pins are making contact. And when you boot up the game, you'll actually get a lot of like weird glitches and different stuff. Now this is very dangerous because it can damage both your game and your console. But on the Retron 77, if you click the fry button, you'll get the same experience except you don't have to worry about hurting the console or the game itself. And again, this is really a mixed bag. Most of the stuff I saw really didn't add anything of value, but it's still a cool feature. And the best feature that this thing has going for it as a result of being an emulator box is that it does have save states. On the front of the console here, there's a button for save and load. Now pressing save will create a save state and then hitting load will load that save state later. And there's pretty much zero lag when loading, so that's cool. Most of these games aren't really the type that can benefit from this. I have to say most are just kind of high score, do whatever you want kind of games. There's not a lot of like in-depth games on the Atari 2600 that take a long time to play, but for the few there are, or if you just want to mess around with this, it is cool that you can load save states. And the final thing to focus on in this video is actually the controller. The Retron 77 comes with a pretty cool controller that is compatible with the original Atari 2600 and obviously with the 77. And it's a little bit different than the original Atari controller in that they gave it two buttons so that you can play it comfortably either left-handed or right-handed, and they also kind of smoothed off some of the edges 
areas, which is a look that they're really going for. You can see it in like the box and everything else, but they smoothed out the edges so that it's more comfortable and it doesn't dig into your hands, which the original controllers are well known for. So that's another thing that I want to cover is how good is this controller? And now, as I mentioned, I am no expert on the Atari 2600. I never had one as a kid, unlike pretty much every other console that I've covered. And my total playtime on original Atari games until I got the Retron 77 would have added up to maybe two hours. So what I decided to do for this video for the first time ever is I'm actually bringing in a guest. Now I'm bringing in my friend Dave, who is a huge fan of the Atari 2600. It would be one of his favorite consoles of all time. And he's the guy who I did the videos with on the Atari 2600 back in the day. So I really wanted to get his opinion on how the game looks, how it sounds, how it feels, and really how he thinks it compares to the original console. Because having somebody who has actually played both extensively, that's going to be a lot more telling than me just coming in and being like, oh yeah, it works decently. Like, you want somebody who has that expertise, which is why I brought him in. And so we're really going to go through all the different aspects of this console and really see how it compares to the original and how he feels about it and how I feel about it. So Dave, when was the first time you ever played Atari? Um, well, the, the first time, the, to, to my knowledge mm -hmm. of the dates, I think the first time, and actually it might be that very machine that you, you took photos of earlier, mm -hmm. uh, would have been somewhere around 1990. Okay. So, I mean, the, the machine was made around 77. Yes. So, I mean, it, it, it's, it's already about 40 years old. The same yes, age of course. as the car I have. So. Yeah, of course. So, it's already older than I am. So, originally yeah, so, you had uh, the screw in there for the Atari. Yeah, like, when, when I screwed it in, like that, that was my first experience connecting a video game machine. Since my parents really didn't go out and buy me a video game machine, this is all hand-me-down junk. Yeah. So I think it was my cousins in Toronto, the machine originally. Okay. And they sort of said, "Well, this is too old." They had a they had a Nintendo or an NES at the yeah, time. Yeah, the the and, hot new and, thing. And that was passed down to me with some games, which most of them that you saw in, yeah. in that box. Yeah. Um. Do you remember what the first games you played were on Atari? Oh God. Um. For for me, the, the games that I remember playing. Um. I do remember playing Space Invaders as one of the a games. classic. Yeah. Uh, which is a favorite of mine to this day because it's not easy if you're not used to the old joystick controllers. And no, it's was, not. Like, you put it onto a new computer. Oh, yeah, I can beat the <laughs> game. Yeah, screw that. Oh, it's never the yeah. same as playing it on the console. Especially when you have dodgy controllers that barely work properly. Oh, it's, it's even more fun. Um, <laughs> That's all like, about the experience. Oh, yeah, for sure. They have like, a machine that works perfectly fine. That's not fun. <laughs> Trust me. You want to be stuck slamming the button down to try and get this stupid thing more almost ripping the handle off the joystick <laughs> just to get your character to move away from the thing being shot at you it was either pac-man or mrs pac-man okay i've got one from parker i've got one from mattel you mm -hmm. got Acnavision. uh you got coleco that was making some games um there's another one called i think imagic that it's a weird it's a weird one the way it's yeah. the right way it's molded uh mousetrap is another weird one i didn't okay. play that as much but okay. it, it was played so this was all basically to say that Dave, he's very familiar with Atari. He's he's the guy I played Atari with in the previous videos we did on the channel. Mm -hmm. He he knows how it's supposed to control, how it's supposed to look, how it's supposed to feel. More or less. <laughs> More or less. Yeah. Which is why he was the guy I wanted to bring in to actually test out this Retron 77. Mm -hmm. Alright guys, so as I just discovered, there's actually sound issues with the Retron 77. So immediately upon plugging in the Retron 77, we started to have issues. Oh, oh wow, yeah. this game has no sound by the way. It's supposed to. Really? Yes, because mine has sound. Hey guys, so jumping in here while I'm editing this video because there has been some new developments on figuring out what happened with the sound. And as it turns out, the Retron 77 actually outputs its sound in a very weird format. And as a result, the Retron 77 isn't compatible with a lot of devices, such as the HDMI switcher that I have set up in my game room, and even a lot of capture cards like the Elgato HD60 that I use. And it took a lot of back and forth and several emails between me and Elgato support and Hyperkin support to actually get to the root of this issue. But in the end, if you have an HDMI switcher or a capture card that doesn't support strange audio formats, you're not gonna get any sound at all when you use this console. And that is kind of a huge deal. Chances are it's probably compatible with your TV. There's a good chance it won't be with an HDMI switcher though. And if you have any intention of recording or streaming games off of this console, 
You're probably going to be out of luck. Apparently, it does work with a Razer capture card, which is what Hyperkin tested it with. But other brands like Elgato, it's just it's not going to work. And unfortunately, there's no fix, nothing you can do about it. Now, the second problem that I ran into, and this one frustrated me like you would not believe, is actually the aspect ratio. We're in the wrong aspect ratio again. God damn it. Now, when you plug your Retron 77 into your TV, it automatically defaults to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio to basically fill your entire TV. Although, most Atari games do have very thick black borders around all the edges, so it doesn't quite fill it anyways, but it defaults to this kind of stretched look. Oh, fuck, I always... Yeah. Forget the aspect ratio. And I feel like this is a huge oversight because their main clientele, like the audience they're trying to appeal to, is like retro gamers. And I mean, every retro gamer that I know wants these consoles to play in the actual default resolution that it was designed in, not this blown up, stretched out horrible looking resolution and the retron 77 every time you boot it up every time you reset it anything you do it will always default to 16 by 9 and there is a button on the back that will let you toggle to 4 by 3 which is correct but you're gonna have to press that every time you boot this thing up and i kept forgetting to do it and it annoyed the hell out of me Swimming. oh fucking god damn it 4x3. The fact that I would actually have to have my console within arm's reach to press this button every time I play a game or boot up a new game, that's super frustrating and it feels like a huge oversight. I don't know why it always has to default to the incorrect aspect ratio. Now one of the key points in favor of this console is that both Dave and I agree that the, the image quality is incredible. See this is the clarity I remember when I was a kid on the old CRT type uh, screens. I mean, I touched on this before, but Atari 2600 games have never looked this good. Even playing the Atari 2600 on a CRT, I could not get them to look this good. So it's worth noting that the image quality is superb. Now, in terms of compatibility with different games, I will say it's actually very solid. Now, I tested out about 30 games on the Retron 77. And of course, that is a drop in the bucket compared to the entire Atari 2600 library. But 30 games is a pretty good sampling size. And almost every game worked, although several of them did have to be cleaned. And it's worth noting that cleaning Atari 2600 games, it's a little bit more complicated than cleaning like an NES game because usually the pins get protected by this plastic thing that slides down. So you kind of have to wiggle that out of the way to be able to clean the pins. But once you figure out how to do that, it's not that bad. And then if your games are clean, I found they worked very well with the Retron 77. I even specifically bought a few games that I saw people saying they had problems with, such as Indy 500, and I was able to get my copy to work with the Retron 77 with zero issues. In the entire time playing, the only official game that we could not get to work... Super Cobra is a Parker Brothers game, and that fits the Atari. Okay, so we're trying... Oh! Game does not work. Nice. That's what it means when the game doesn't work. In terms of compatibility, the Retron 77 is supposed to have a 99% compatibility rate. And that's worth noting because it means almost every game you're going to put in works well. And that's more than you can say with like the Retron 5. So that's definitely a point in this thing's favor. One disappointing note though when it comes to compatibility is that the vast majority of homebrew games are not going to work when you plug in the cartridge. And homebrew is a huge part of playing the Atari 2600. Like the homebrew library is massive. Massive. Tons of people make their own like fan games or home games for this thing and you can buy the cartridge and personally I love collecting those kind of nifty things and there's some really awesome homebrew games and I did test one of my homebrew games on the original console and then the 77 and it worked on the original Atari 2600 and it did not work on the Retron 77. Now the Retron 77 has a mini SD card slot in the back and it comes with an SD card and you're able to load game ROMs onto this and that will actually let you play your homebrew games like the asses of fire game while it does not work playing off the direct cartridge if i load it onto the sd card as a rom it will boot up and it will play properly now it is great that you can play these homebrew games using the sd card method this is awesome it's great but for me it is a bummer that like i can buy the cartridge and it's not going to work and it works with the original machine like it kind of kills my reason for like collecting those kind of cartridges which is really i found that super disappointing 
Something else cool to note though is that the SD card does come loaded up with a few homebrew games already on it, direct from Hyperkin. And while I didn't think these games were anything special, I mean it's cool that they give you free games. One of the things I did not like about the SD card though is that the software to actually boot up the Retron 77 is on that SD card, which means if you lose the SD card, your console doesn't work at all. It won't even like turn on and give you a boot up screen. The light will come on, but nothing will run. And then the final thing that I discussed with Dave and that we really got to try out very heavily was this controller here. And as much as I wanted to like this controller, in the end, neither of us really did. But okay. It's, it's just that you feel it's very stiff. I, I, it's either stiff, not really that responsive. I do love the design. I think it looks really great. And I think the Retron 77 itself looks really great. I mean, that console looks awesome. But in the end, something about this controller, it's just, it's not particularly responsive. Like, for example, we played Ms. Pac Man with this controller and then with an original Atari 2600 controller. And it just controlled so much better with the original controller. Like, this controller, for some reason, the joystick it's just like a little bit too stiff like it has a little bit too much pushback and it almost like fights against you making like fine point turning and all that more difficult than it needs to be and i will say that the atari 2600 it's a console where the controls are already really imprecise or at least it feels imprecise and so adding even more imprecision into that mix is not a good thing and a lot of people have actually had problems with this controller in that if you use it heavily you'll hear like a little bit of a pop inside. So I, I heard something when I was moving it. And then afterwards, it makes like this clicking noise when you use it. While the controller might still work, it has like this weird clicking noise, which mine is doing now after having used it for like maybe an hour and a half. You can hear it here. It didn't do that right out of the box. So that's kind of, I don't know, that's kind of worrisome. And now in terms of input lag, there is some on the Retron 77. I did feel it, especially I tried a game on this and then immediately I tried the Atari 2600 directly to my TV through the coax cable and I could tell there was a difference. Now, I didn't feel like the input lag was anywhere near as bad as on the Retron 5 and I would even go as far as to say that the input lag on this is acceptable. It's pretty near to what I would get attaching the Atari 2600 to a VCR to an upscale or to a capture card to my TV. Most Atari 2600 games don't rely on super fast reactions, so it's probably not gonna get in your way that much, but just be aware, because this is basically an emulator, there is input lag, and if you're very sensitive to that kind of stuff, like I am, you're gonna feel it. So in the end, I have to say, I am actually really disappointed with the Retron 77. I feel like they had a really big opportunity here. In the end, it just, as much as I wanted to like this thing, like, I went in with really, really high hopes, and even, like, I hedged my expectations. Like, I knew it was only 720p, I knew it was an emulator, so not everything would work, but, like, even with all that, at the end of the day, I feel like I'm... I don't know, I just, I'm really disappointed with this thing and it's really unfortunate because I really wanted to like it. I mean, the issue with the sound is already a bummer. I mean, it means I can't even hook it into my actual setup. I mean, the input lag, that's something you have to contend with. I mean, you should know that that's gonna be there going in. The fact that the controller though, I mean, it's just not very responsive and then it's like breakable. It doesn't stand up to the test of time anywhere near as well as the old controllers from the 70s do. That's a bummer and I also feel like the console should have come with two controllers i mean most atari 2600 games you play with a friend like nobody plays pong solo you know what i mean like sure there are solo games but i feel like the atari 2600 is known for its multiplayer and this just you can't do that with just one controller and something else that really disappointed me is that maybe you know this maybe you don't but you're actually able to hook in a sega genesis controller to the original atari 2600 because it has the same hookup and some games especially especially the homebrews, they work much better with a D-pad because it's more precise. However, the Retron 77, it will have nothing to do with it. You cannot hook up a Genesis controller to the 77, or at least I couldn't get it to work. And it's not that my controller was broken because I tried it on the original console, worked perfectly. Tried it on the 77, nothing. And the fact that homebrew games don't work off the cartridges, the fact that the cartridges don't work, to me, that's a major disappointment as well. And overall, really, it's just the feel of the console is just not right. 
it's, I mean, it's something that Dave picked up on. It's something that I picked up on. Like one of the reasons that I love the retro consoles, one of the reasons I'm super into retro gaming, and it's more than just there's so many awesome games and you know which ones are awesome and which ones suck. It's because everything just works. Like at most, you might have to blow in a cartridge or you shouldn't actually do that. You should clean it with like alcohol or something. But at most, you might have to clean in a cartridge. But you plug in the game, you boot on the console and everything, it just works. You don't have to download like a 16 gig patch every time you boot it up. It just, it runs. And the Retron 77, I just, I can't say that. I mean, every time I plugged it in, it felt like I was fighting to get it to work. Like there was always an issue. There was always a problem. It gave me flashbacks to playing with the Retron 5. And it's just, that's such a bummer. I mean, when you play a retro game, you just want to plug it in and have it work. And I just, I can't say that this does that. Like there's so many like little hoops and issues and things that you have to deal with. I mean, the end, it was just, I don't know. It was just disappointing. And the biggest disappointment is that I feel like this console had such high potential. I mean, the market is ripe for a good Atari 2600 clone system. I feel like if they put just a little bit more work into this thing, they could have gotten there. I'm sure they did the best they could, and there's some things just because it's an emulator, there's nothing that you can do, but I mean, I feel like if they had just made the controllers a little bit better, maybe you put two in the box instead of just one, really, really worked on compatibility, try and get, you know, those homebrew games to run off of the cartridges, fix like that sound problem. If they could have gotten it to run in like HD, like actual HD 1080p. I mean, all these little minor fixes really would have gone a long way to making this console like a must buy. And even if they had doubled the price, I still would have been on board with it. I still would have bought it. I mean, this thing sells for about seven dollars US, which is quite cheap, which is possibly why it's missing some of these fixes and polish that like I would have liked to see there. But even if they had sold it for like 150 with all the fixes that I just mentioned, it would be worth it. But because of all the issues that I've had with this thing, even at that low price of 70 bucks, I really, I can't recommend it. This console here, if you're a very casual gamer, like you're very casual, you don't have any homebrews, you just have like the core Atari 2600 games, you just want an easy way to play them. This, it would work for you and it's cheap, but if you want to go a little bit more in depth, like if you want to explore the entire Atari library, if you want to play the homebrews, if you want to do anything with it like streaming, recording, if you want to run it through a switcher to your TV, I mean, I can't recommend this because it's, it's just not going to work for you. So who knows, maybe if there are some new developments on the Atari front in the future, I'll do like a second part to Atari in HD, but as it is right now, this thing, it's, it's definitely not the best. I mean, it works, but it just doesn't work as well as somebody like me wants or needs it to. I mean, if you want to get it, if you think it's for you, great. Just be aware of all the issues that I outlined. So yeah, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got the information that you needed for yourself to understand whether or not this console is worth buying for you or whether or not it isn't. If you do know of any ways to fix any of the issues that I've outlined in this video, or if Hyperkin does come out with fixes for the problems like the sound issue, compatibility, whatever, I will pin a comment down below with all that information. Or if you know of any fixes, leave a comment. And yeah, guys, that pretty much wraps up this video. It wraps up everything I had to say. This video might be long, but I had to go pretty in depth to at least get all the information out there that is really needed to be known before you buy this thing. And yeah, guys, thanks a lot for watching. As always, I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, my name is Rob Noir, and today I have a video for you all about playing your GameCube in HD. So I've done videos like this in the past. I've covered this. You know that I am a huge fan of the N64. When I was a kid growing up, we originally had an NES. We had that for a while until I was...